Hello, in this video we're going to look at markets and consumer welfare by constructing a consumer's demand curve for coffee and then calculating consumer surplus. So Jeb likes to drink coffee. Here is the value he places on drinking coffee during a typical day. He values the first cup at $8. That's his maximum willingness to pay for his first cup of coffee. He values the second cup at $4, the third cup at $1, and the fourth cup at $0.15. Cents. So these values represent his maximum willingness to pay. We're going to assume that Jeb can only buy discrete units of coffee. So he could buy one, two, or three, four cups a day, but he can't buy 1.27 cups or 1.5 cups. So let's drive Jeb's demand curve for coffee given his value that he places on each cup. So what I like to do is just graph these coordinates. I want to find $8 and 1. So for the first cup of coffee, Jeb values that at $8. That's his maximum willingness to pay. If Jeb drinks one cup, the most he's willing to pay for the second cup is $4. So I'm finding that coordinate 4 and 2 right here. And then I'm doing the same thing for the third and fourth cup of co coffee, marking those coordinates with these red dots here. So just rewriting that last graph, last figure. To calculate the demand curve, given that we're assuming discrete units can only be purchased, the demand curve will look like stairs, like a staircase. So this blue line here is indicating the demand for Jeb. And I just want to reiterate that the height of the demand curve at any point gives Jeb's maximum willingness to pay. So for the first cup of coffee, we go to the height of the demand curve here. Jeb at most is willing to pay $8. He's not going to pay $10 for the first cup. He's not going to pay $9. At most, he'll pay $8. And the same idea for the second, third, and fourth cup. So for the third cup, at most, Jeb would be willing to pay $1 for the third cup of coffee. He's not going to pay $2 for it or $3 or anything above $1. So given Jeb's demand curve, let's just ask a number of different questions about Jeb's quantity demanded at a given price. So at a price of $10 a cup, how many cups does Jeb drink per day? Well, $10 is off Jeb's demand curve. At a price of $10, Jeb will not buy any coffee. At most, he's willing to pay 8 bucks for the first cup. At a price of $7, how many cups does Jeb drink? So we find $7.00 go across horizontally here, and we bump into the demand curve right here, come down, Jeb will consume one cup of coffee. He's not going to consume the second cup. At most, Jeb is willing to pay $4 for the second cup. He's not going to pay a market price of $7 for something he values at 4 So again, at a price of $7, take that price, walk it across horizontally till we bump in the demand curve, and Jeb will buy only one cup. At a price of $5, same idea, find $5, walk that across. Jeb, once again, will only buy one cup of coffee at a price of $5. He's not going to buy the second cup. For the second cup, he needs a price of $4 or less in order to be induced to buy the, four, or the second cup. At a price of $4 a cup, Jeb will buy two cups of coffee at a price of $4. He'll buy the first cup because he values the first cup more than the price. And he'll buy the second cup. He values the second cup at $4, so he'd be willing to pay $4 for a cup of coffee. He's not going to buy the third cup at $4. The third cup he values at $1. He's not going to pay $4 for something he values at $1. At a price of $2, find the price of $2, come across horizontally, and once again, we see that Jeb will only buy two cups of coffee. At a price of a dollar a cup, here Jeb will buy three cups of coffee. At a price of 75 cents a cup, still three cups. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about calculating consumer surplus. Here we're going to ask, what is Jeb's consumer surplus at a price of $6 per cup? So we find the price, and then we walk that across horizontally. And we bump into the demand curve, and we see that Jeb will buy one cup of coffee. 
So the, the consumer surplus is just the difference between the maximum Jeb is willing to pay for a cup of coffee and the market price. So when Jeb buys one cup of coffee, he values that cup at $8, but he only pays $6. So that difference represents consumer surplus of $2. We can think of consumer surplus as the area between the height of the demand curve and the market price up to the number of units purchased. In this case, the number of units purchased at $6 is one cup. So this area right here, which we could represent as uh, width times length, the area of a, a rectangle here. So just width, time, width times length, 8 minus 6 is 2, multiplied by 1 minus 0. I'll do that calculation right here. It's $2. And let's do another example. What is Jeb's consumer surplus at $2 per cup? So what is Jeb's consumer surplus at $2 a cup? Here's a diagram over here. The market price is $2. So how many units or how many cups of coffee will Jeb buy? He'll buy two. So Jeb will buy the first cup of coffee because he values that cup at $8 and he only has to pay $2 for it. Jeb is willing to buy the second cup uh, at $2 because he values that cup at $4. Again, the height of the demand curve for the second cup. Jeb will not buy the third cup of coffee. The market price exceeds his maximum willingness to pay. So consumer surplus is just the area between the height of the demand curve and the market price up to the last unit consumed. In this case, that's two units. So we got this area right here. And we can break this area up into two rectangles. This first rectangle is uh, width times length. So 8 minus 2 multiplied by 1 minus 0. So that's just $6, okay, width times length for this rectangle right here. And then this little tiny rectangle to the right of it has a uh, area 4 minus 2 and 2 minus 1. So it's just 2 times 1, and that's where the $2 is coming from. So in total, in total here, when Jeb buys two cups of coffee at a market price of $2, he receives consumer surplus of $8. $6 on the first cup plus $2 on the second cup. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.